What's going on? My name is Dexter Thomas. I'm a, a correspondent for Vice News. And uh, as you can see, I'm here in my apartment in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty much staying put. And if you're like me, hopefully you're like me, uh, you're also staying put. Uh, it's weird times right now, pretty much all over the place. Uh, but we're all pretty much in the same boat. And while we're here in the same boat, uh, I thought we might check in with some people really all over the world doing all kind of interesting stuff. And uh, so we came up with this this concept, uh, this series called Receiver. So this is going to be weekly. And uh, for the first inaugural person we're bringing on, um, Andrew Bird, who is an alumni of the show you've been on before. And so we're pretty excited to have you back. Um, yeah, man. So you are you're in L.A. too, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Su super weird. It's uh, we're <laughs> we're in, in the same area of the country, but it's like we're worlds apart. It's kind of weird right now. I know. I figured you were in New York or something, but uh, here you go. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, man. It's, you know, on the other side of the internet. But so for people who are not familiar with you for your work, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How do you, how do you introduce yourself? Uh, man, I don't, that's a tough one. I, I'm a songwriter, first and foremost. Uh, I play violin and guitar, but mainly violin. And, mm -hmm. uh, I've made 15 records over the years and they range in from kind of old timey to experimental pop, you know, uh, just, I try to write a good song basically. <laughs> try to write a good song. Yeah. So how have you been adjusting to this whole, I guess, new normal, if you want to call it that? Well, um, I try to have uh, some routine, you know, some something to give the day some shape to it. Um, mm -hmm. I try to not, I've never been kind of a leisure wear kind of guy, so I, I do get dressed in the morning as if I'm going out, but I don't. Right. Um, and uh, so this is, I, I didn't, you know, this is, I, I just don't, I don't wear sweats, you know, so. Um, <laughs> So you you, so you pulling up in the suit indoors. This is what you do all the time. This, I mean, throwing on a jacket is no big deal. You know, it's just it's it's that's, you're done. Um, okay. But uh, and I've been doing these. I've been doing almost a song every day on Instagram, which has been therapeutic for me. Mm. Uh, just having some. I mean, I. If I don't, if I go for more than a week without some sort of performance, I feel really uncomfortable. Like performing is just a uh, really important to my well-being and happiness. So, thanks to technology, I can do that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's been really helpful to me. I'm I'm really grateful that I have have that outlet. You know. Mm. How about the, I mean, there's the performance aspect, obviously, but how about the songwriting aspect, right? Because, I mean, you're somebody who's constantly pulling from different places, and and some of that is stuff that you're experiencing out in the world, right? So how, how has that affected your writing recently? It's interesting. I I was trying to write uh, uh, a song, uh, basically a Christmas song, original, like holiday song for round out this record that I've been working on called Hark. Hmm. And I, I cannot, I can't not be aware of what's happening right now when I'm writing that, because I'm thinking ahead, oh. It's gonna happen. Uh oh. I think I lost this one. I think we might have lost you a bit there. Yeah, we lost. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's I'm it's called Christmas in April because I can't you know I can't pretend that everything's going to be okay <laughs> you know, but I'm wondering yeah. what's going to be what where we're going to be at in in eight months. Um, but it's still kind of a, you know trying to be an uplifting, uh, positive song. But it's it's I can't uh, I can't filter out in my songwriting how I'm feeling right now. You know. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, because because the thing is, you don't, we don't know what it's going to be like in December. You know what I mean? Hopefully things are back. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Writing a, <laughs> writing a Christmas song yeah. right now seems, it seems like pretty heavy work. It, it, it was uh, surprisingly easy because it's hmm. um, true to how I'm feeling, you know, but I'm going to try to hmm. get it out this month because it, it's timely. I hope, I hope it's, I hope that it's uh, out of date by the time Christmas comes around. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hope it's like, oh, remember that? That was weird. But, um, but it's Jeez. kind of a mixture of kind of funny and emotional. Like at some point in the middle of the song, I just say, uh, I'm writing a song about Christmas in April. I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think about that, folks. Um, and that's <laughs> Those are the lyrics? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just I start talking in the middle of the song um, because that's mm. what I was feeling at the moment. Sometimes, you know, you just break, uh, break character and just, uh, and just talk, you know, just, uh, in the middle of the song it makes, makes sense sometimes. Uh, I mean, if you're going to break character, it sounds like now's about the right time to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been writing that and doing the song mm. every day, either from my catalog or, or doing covers. Um, we're listening to a lot of John Cale and Lou Reed right now in the house. Um, okay. so that's, um, that's kind of influencing the tone of what I'm, I'm writing these days and, and listening to, and, um, I don't know, we're fine. We're finding that, that music to be comforting, especially the John Cale stuff. Mm. Um, and, uh. Yeah, just playing a lot of soccer in the backyard and <laughs> cooking. This is with your son? And yeah. Yeah, he just wants to play soccer all day long. We're lucky we have a little bit of a little bit of driveway we can play on, not much, but mm -hmm. um uh and that's that's how we get our exercise. Um and okay. I don't know. I feel uh kind of lucky right now, honestly. We we're, we're I'm here with my family and I'm usually on the road. I would be on the road right now if this wasn't happening. So we're just kind of hunkered down together, which I'm really grateful for. True, true. Yeah, so for people just tuning in, uh, we're here with Andrew Bird, um, you know, first in our series uh, called Receiver, where we're inviting artists on to, you know, play a little something and also, you know, have a conversation. And so speaking of which, um, you just dropped a video recently um tell, tell me about that but also tell me about the timing because it's kind of interesting timing Hold on. um yeah a bit of a, I, I just put out a single go. called capital crimes and mm. uh it's a song that i wrote for the last record um my finest work yet and it didn't make the cut of the record because it was such a I mean, there's a lot of political and, and somewhat topical songs on My Finest Work yet, but this one was so such a single issue song um, mm -hmm. about the death penalty and, and, uh, and the absurdity of, of, of that, um, that I felt it was almost too, too much. It just didn't quite fit on the record, but it feels very timely right now uh, mm -hmm. in that it's it's more it turned out in the context of what's happening now it t turns out to speak to more than just just issues of of uh the immorality of the death penalty it's it's talking about you know times like these um they kind of highlight they they bring out the uh, absurdity of of some thinking that starts happening uh in the populace and in the government of like kind of coldly practical uh thinking that's that's so amoral and and uh problematic like mm. the issue of of like oh uh i th the elder generation should should just sort of sacrifice themselves to for the economy and that was being dis the fact that that's even been discussed last last week is is uh alarming you know mm -hmm. that uh 
I mean, we're all in this together. And the things that hold our society together are are not laws and 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 policies like like these, you know. And it's not really the government's place to um, be de deciding who should live and who should die. Um, and so the first line of the song is, "If I let go of your hand, it would be murder." It's like these little things, um, like the healthcare workers right now, are probably very tempted for their own um, uh, self-preservation to walk off the job, but they don't, you know? And mm -hmm. those are the things that are holding our society together, are these individual people's decisions to do the right thing and um, to put themselves in harm's way. And that's, that's, that's what's keeping us together, not our nation's leader right now. Mm. Um, so anyway, this the song that started off about uh, about the death penalty, and basically it's from an article that I, I read a few years ago uh, that they for a while they were giving IQ tests to death row inmates to decide if you know if you scored low enough on an IQ test you would be spared the uh, execution, and if you scored above seventy you would be executed, and then. They, get, they did away with that, but the fact that that was even mm -hmm. a policy for, for any period of time is just points out that the whole thing is wrong, you know? Gotcha. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty heavy song, but it's, it's, it does speak to what's happening these days. Um, it's more universal, universal than I thought it was, I'll say that. So, yeah, um, so once again, for people just tuning in, um, Andrew Burr, we're talking about Capital Crimes, which is a, a song he wrote last year, but as you're saying, it's starting to feel a lot more relevant. Uh, so yeah, can we hear it? Yeah, yeah. We're a fine institution. We're using a test to decide. Like some kind of sick solution. We should live and we should die. Thank you. 
been this way since the flight. The sea. Capital crimes, nickels and dimes all across the globe. Okay, so once again, Andrew Bird, hopefully there's all kind of clap emojis happening in the chat right now. Uh, I would do it too, but it's just me here. Um, yeah, man, that is amazing. So it's, 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 and also I should say, by the way, um, speaking of being in the chat, um, I know there's people watching on Facebook, people watching on, um, on YouTube, we are taking questions. So if you have a question you want me to throw to Andrew Bird, feel free, write it in, we'll get it to him. Um, but yeah, it, it is. It is weird how how relevant that feels, especially when I mean you wrote this song a year ago, but then the video you you just made that recently, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the this guy I work with, Matthew Siskin, uh, made the video, and uh, kind of found uh, he he actually I, when I watched the video, I was like, okay, yeah, I see it. I didn't see it before because I was so deep in the when I wrote that song, but um, mm -hmm. it's it's strikingly um, relevant to what's happening right now. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So once again, Capital Crimes by Andrew Bird. So um, now with regards to, to how you've been expressing yourself recently, if I could ask this, um, I've seen that even recently uh, for the most, you know, the most recent videos that you put up, it used to be, you know, there was I guess a lot of your fans would say even that a lot of your lyrics are pretty cryptic. It feels like you've been getting more and more direct recently. Uh, what, what brought that on for you? Yeah, um, that's a trend I've been on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how conscious it is, but um, I do appreciate more and more other songwriters who can say it, who can say so much with so little, like someone like John Prine, mm. for instance, um, like a really distilled lyric. Um, and there's a goal, there's like a, I used to, you know, kind of uh, write songs to entertain myself and I still do. That's it. It's, mm. it's nothing more satisfying than having a song that I'm working on. Um, but over the years, I've just I've developed less of a uh, this kind of wordplay, um, uh, in, th internal thoughts, you know, kind of cycling around, and that, and I want to have a song that when it's over, you have a pretty good idea of what I'm trying to say, so, you know, mm -hmm. still keeping it in a lyrical poetic um, uh, form, but but uh, but yeah, I just I just want to write songs that are are that more people can relate to, you know? Um, mm. And, uh, but from the first song I wrote to the last song I wrote over the last 20 some years, I think you can still tell it's 
I'm still the person writing it. You know, <laughs> um, it's just uh, you know the s s songs from say Noble Beast are are were kind of the the depths of my uh, internal machinations and and records like uh, like the most recent one, um, my finest work yet are. You, when a song is over, you're like, I, I might have to look a few things up, but I have a pretty idea, pretty strong idea what, what he's trying to say, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, the, I, so we, I got a question here. Hold on. Let me see if I can read this one. So this is from Mark on Facebook who's saying, Hey, Andrew Bird, I know these are crazy times. I have tickets to your show in Columbus, Ohio in June. How do you determine if you're going to go through that show in the coming months? It's not looking likely. Um, mm. we're just, it's, it, it's, there's a lot of chips that have to fall for the whole thing to get pulled down still, but, um, uh, we're just kind of waiting on, on, on to, to, to figure things out with the promoters. But, um, it's, I think it's looking like it's going to be rescheduled to, um, uh, next, the following spring or summer. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I can't say for sure yet. I know stuff in August is getting canceled right now, so that's not a good sign. Yeah. I mean, how, how is this affecting you as, as a performer, being somebody who, who does go on the road? Um, well, it's, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to keep my, uh, my band and crew employed. Um, mm -hmm we did reschedule the, the April tour that's about to happen, was about to happen to October. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been my life for the last 25 years is going on the road for uh, a good portion of the year. So it's, it's a, it's a shift. Um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, in, in just overall, it's like we've, we've been, I feel like the world was spinning out of control <laughs> and we were just hurling <laughs> through space up until recently and it just all stopped. It's just, that's what's so, so strange about all this, um, mm. that, that things could grind to a halt so completely. It's, uh, it's a time for, uh, to really reflect on, on what we were doing, you know, growth, ambition, um, everything in our economy and, and is, is, uh, counts on growth, you know, is, is mm -hmm. that's like, if, if we don't grow by 4% every year, it's considered a failure. Whereas, um, I don't know, can we, can we think of another, um, another kind of equilibrium out there that doesn't, you know, uh, put our whole planet into peril? Um, There's a, but anyway, back to the touring thing. The touring thing yeah, seems yeah. rather uh, like not terribly important com compared to what's happening right now. Hmm. There's I've seen a lot of people. You've probably seen this too, uh, saying, "Okay, well, if I'm going to be shut indoors, I'm going to figure out. You know, I mean, I'm I'm going to learn Spanish. I'm gonna I'm going to learn how to sew. I'm going to work on that project that I've been meaning to work on. Um, do you find yourself right. doing that, working on something else that you hadn't been anticipating needing to take the time for say um well i think all those things are are like these projects yeah with that i mean i used to do that in chicago when when it would get cold out for um most of the year <laughs> you'd like yeah try to you'd be shut in and you'd you'd, you'd come out in the springtime with something you made you know hmm. and this is a little more extreme version of that but um but yeah, it's what you do to fight depression, to fight your demons, to um, to keep uh, keep some kind of music in your head, some kind of um, noise that kind of keeps the the darkness away. And it's a natural human instinct. I think it's probably a good one. Because um, yeah, I know if I if I'm not if I don't have a project, if I'm not don't have some kind of goals, I get I get pretty down. So. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 but to answer your question, no, I'm not, I'm not learning, um, 
any foreign languages right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty keeping pretty busy. I'm, I'm working on a record, a uh, duo record I just did with my friend Jimbo Mathis that's just mm -hmm. finished mixing that. And that's gonna, we're going to expedite that, get that out this summer. Um, I'm in a hurry to kind of get stuff out there because I, you know, it's not the usual paradigm of like, uh, make music so that you can go on tour. It's just make music to get it out there into the universe. So, um, I figure just, just get it out there. And, and, um, so I've been, I've been just writing a lot and, and, and putting together the next releases, which is I'll, I'll have two out, two more out this year. So. So the, there's one I got to ask about, and I've, I've seen this floating around a little bit, but, um, in terms of stuff that, that I've heard you're working on, uh, what is, what is this about Professor Socks that I've heard about? Oh, yeah. Um, that's something I should probably uh, lay into right now. Um, it's this idea I had years ago of, of like a kid's TV show. Um, and I, I was on this show called Jack's Big Music Show. And I played a character, a TV show, where I played a character called Dr. Strings. And I sing a song about um, fixing your musical instruments with strings in and um it turned it turned into kind of a big big deal like a lot of kids um age four to eight were love dr strings and and uh people were asking me to do this song it it shows and then someone yelled out at the show i think it was in london said must have gotten confused and or were high and they just said professor socks <laughs> instead of dr strings and i thought now I got to do something with that. I have no choice. That is, that is <laughs> brilliant. Um, so I came up with this guy, this sort of uh, shabby, befuddled professor that that has a storefront laboratory, and he has an animatronic fox as a sidekick and a <laughs> uh, resident librarian, a love interest named Marion, and uh, it's sort of a mix between Jim Henson, Muppets, and Mister Rogers. <laughs> So, uh, so, so wait, my, me and, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, uh, the, the premise is that me and my friend, the Fox, um, go over to a drawer full of socks and we put on the socks and slide across the wood floors. And then the friction transports us to different, uh, adventures. <laughs> so how so far along I just have to sit down and, are you? Uh, I've just written the theme song and which sets up the whole premise, which is, which is something I just can't, you know, it's, I've got writer's block with the rest of it. I've got to write a bunch of songs about scientific uh, phenomena. And I think that's, <laughs> that's a lot of work, you know, to, to write songs that are actually, you know, it's like schoolhouse, like Bob DeRoe is my hero. And he's my, he's the gold standard of like writing a, a song that's about, some sort of mathematical or, or, or grammatical uh, principle. I mean, that's yeah. a tall order. That's why I've, I've been a little uh, hung up on it. But um, so how do you introduce that in all in the theme song? <laughs> how do I introduce what? Yeah, how do you introduce? You said you you have a theme song that sets that all up. How do you how do you set all that up in a theme song? Oh. Um, it's kind of, it's easy. You know, those old S Sid and Marty Croft movies, those weird movies from the, uh, not movies, uh, TV shows. They were like these TV shows in the seventies and they would just kind of set up the whole premise in the theme song. Um, <laughs> usually about a, a boy and a orangutan or something like that, but you know, land of the lost. Um, but, uh, th those are the, that and Bob Duro, that's, those are the, it just goes like this. Um, Tell us, Professor, what's in your dresser, all that you want to know. Come on, my babies, on my lazy days, Professor, that TV show. Professor Sauls, he's my teacher, teach us how to whistle, to put our lips together and blow. Professor Sauls, he's gonna scrape a half a tune on his trusty old fiddle and bow. Takes the socks from the drawer. He puts them on his feet. 
He slides across the floor. A ghost speaks, speaks. All the places will explore. The people we will meet. Hey, Professor. What's in your dress so now? Tell us, Professor, what's in just an author you want to know. Come on, my baby's on the list. This professor got TV show. And he goes on like that. Wow. Um, I would watch that. I would watch that. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be, uh, you know, uh, beloved by adults and children the same. I like, you know, I, I kind of picture that sort of fraggle rock kind of musty uh, Muppet show kind of uh, sepia toned, dusty, <laughs> weird, you know, rats playing, playing jug band music and uh, <laughs> I, love but it. I think I need a writer's room or something, you know? I can't, I don't know if I can do this all myself. You know? Not even when you're cooped up? <laughs> yeah, I, I just need to buckle down and do it. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. That, you know, you, maybe you, you're onto something. Maybe I should, I should lay into that, yeah. All right. Well, once again, uh, for those just jumping on, uh, this is Andrew Bird. Uh, we've heard a couple couple things now, and uh, I've got one more one more question I want to get to. So, uh, Chris is asking, uh, will you be really will you be releasing the performance from Carnegie Hall? Oh yeah, um, we always intended to. We certainly. It's not a. Uh, it's a. You have to. It's very expensive to make a recording at Carnegie Hall, so I've I've, I've got to put it out to get my money back on that. It came out great. <laughs> it just um, we're just trying to find out when when to put it out. But um, we've already got, like I said, probably two records coming out this year. So maybe um, maybe sometime next year. But uh, okay. everyone's keeping me on task here. This is good. Like you got to make sure I do Professor Stocks. You got people making sure I'm putting out Carnegie Hall. Um, that was that was a show uh, that Bob Duro uh, came out and on his 96th birthday and played played some schoolhouse rock uh, tunes with us. That, so um, that was a very memorable show. Yeah. Well, man, I think we are about coming up on time. So once again, Andrew Bird, thank you so much for hanging out with us on Receiver. And uh, yeah, where can people find you? Where do people find me? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Other like, than uh, indoors. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, the places where I'm doing the most uh, activity right now are on my Instagram um, account. So I'm doing a song pretty much six days a week, um, every day. And it's very casual and uh, it's just me, obviously. Um, <laughs> but it's it's been really... Uh, is is really what's keeping me keeping me sane. So uh, mm. I'm I'm glad people are enjoying that. And um, yeah, you just you can find me. I'm home. <laughs> I'm around. <laughs> like anybody else. All right. Well, once again, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, once again for everybody watching at home. Thanks again to y'all for for hanging out with us. And uh, we'll be back next week and we'll have somebody else on and some more music, some more conversation, and it'll be fun. See y'all next time. Thanks, Dexter. Thanks again. All right.